Welcome back to another review. I have the Qbot Magic in for testing today. This is a budget five inch phone. This was sent in via Gearbest for an unbiased review. So we look at some of the features which I've put up on screen. It's actually pretty good for a budget phone with three gig of RAM. We also have front and rear cameras with a front LED as well, which acts as a sort of flashlight. On the back we have two cameras and there's the LED next to that. In the top section they decided to put the micro USB port there and the three and a half millimeter jack. I'm not sure whether that makes much difference putting the charging port on the top or bottom. On the side profile we can see it's a nice curved body. You have a nice contoured buttons as well on the right hand side. We just have a single speaker that works in this. They've used the other side to just uh, cosmetically line up the two. Now you'll notice that the effect is very glossy on the phone. It looks pretty good in person but it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet on the screen and on the back. Just to show you another angle at the screen. Decent enough screen at 720p. There's nice rounded edges. It feels pretty good for the price to be honest. It doesn't feel like a cheap phone. The buttons aren't backlit but they do have uh, quite prominent markings so you won't have any problems seeing those. Just taking a look at the top now at the front, you'll see there's a camera there. That's the LED that uh, comes on as a sort of video light. You also have a notification light, which we'll look at a bit later on. Now to take the back off of this, you need to go into the corner here and peel it off. The back on this is plastic. You can see it flexing. And so we can see the uh, slots here, dual SIM micro size, and we have a micro SD up to 128 gigabytes in size just putting a few cards in to test. Now the back is pretty secure when it's on, there's no creaking or anything like that. But make sure you remove the tab when you get the phone so that you can actually charge and turn the battery on. And it's easy to expand the storage as well, particularly with the newer Android version of 7. Now taking out the battery is quite useful because you can just replace it or carry a spare. That is pretty important. I'm not sure why makers don't do that more often. We're gonna run a test on this battery later on. Now the Android experience is pretty much stock, not a lot of differences between the standard Android. There is a couple of uh, small things that they've done. Just turn on the adaptive brightness, I tend to leave that on. You do have a couple of gesture settings. So you can take, uh, change the wallpaper or take a screenshot. It's also an option for Dura Speed, which will prioritize uh, foreground apps. I personally don't find that I need to use that much. And there's also that notification light. Just the single color on that is blue. So it's just on or off. Did check for an update. There were none available at the present time. Now outside, the screen brightness is actually quite good, but it is pretty reflective. You can see on the screen there. Picks it up quite easily. So yes, you can see it in daylight, but uh, the glossy coating on the screen is a bit uh, more obvious than some other phones that I've used. Decent result on the GPS within a couple of meters and it worked quite well inside as well. Don't always get a signal on that. Just showing you now the included items. They include a quick start guide, the one amp charger, and this is the silicone back case. Cutouts for all of the relevant areas. I definitely would um, put this on the phone if you're not gonna get another case because it gives you a bit more grip Yes, again, it picks up fingerprints, but it certainly helps with the grip for the phone. It's something that could slip out your hands fairly easily. Now, the micro USB tip is longer on the cable, so make sure, pay attention with that if you are using the case. Some of the tips aren't that long. The camera autofocus is a bit on the slow side, particularly inside, and flicking through the modes, a little bit on the slow side too. So I'd like to have seen a bit more speed on that. You have the bokeh mode there. Now, switching to the front facing camera, not as good as the rear, obviously, not unexpected, but you have that LED light. It's not particularly bright, but it's enough to give you a bit of light for a selfie in darkness. There's actually a decent number of settings too. So I'm pleased that they went away from the standard MediaTek app. Slightly disappointed they couldn't speed up the app in operation though. As far as the included apps, pretty much standard stuff on this. Nothing very much different from a normal stock phone. Personally, don't mind that. Now scrolling through web pages and browsing, nice and fast. Yes, it's just a basic quad-core processor, but even zooming in and out, no obvious stutters or lag. 
it's just a quick look at the charging and notification LED light that will flash when you've got a notification. Now the video quality is full HD, but as you can see, it's uh, not particularly great in terms of detail, particularly with the uh, subjects like scenic areas and things like that, which show up more detail, but it didn't look too bad for something like this flower shot. So not a great score really on the video. It's only really basic. Quick shot with the front camera with the LED light on. Cat volunteered for that one and a panoramic shot not too bad some stitching errors on that now the blur or bokeh effect is a bit hit and miss it can work not particularly well in that example but not too bad in this one it's a little bit better than some of the budget android phones that i've used you can see me switching to a normal shot there the main camera isn't bad it's definitely better than previous cubots that i've looked at i've got some fairly decent shots and macro shots off of it but as per usual once you get into low light conditions such as this it gets a bit grainy and desaturated but an all right performance from the camera just a quick example here from a normal shot and then on the hdr it can look a bit processed and it does lift up the shadows a bit but it's not too bad now as far as gaming goes, obviously this isn't aimed as a gaming handset, but it doesn't do too bad. You're just going to see some frames dropped at the highest settings, so I definitely suggest dropping them down to perhaps the mid-range settings, and you should be able to play most games fairly well. That was a sample from the built-in speaker and it's actually quite loud although it can distort a little bit at high volumes i'm now running through my benchmark test so you can compare it to other phones and it did pretty well for a phone in this price range it's no speed demon but it didn't do bad in the 3d and processor tests and i got fairly good results as well on the wi-fi even in weak spots sensors quite basic there's only a few simple ones included so you won't be able to use the google cardboard and there's no support for usb on the go which is surprising now i did test the battery came in close to the rated uh, milliamp hours for the cell but it did take a while to charge about three and a half hours so wrapping up with the cubot magic a couple of points for me would be the autofocus could be a bit quicker also the charging speeds weren't particularly great and the video quality was nothing to shout about on the other hand looking at the price point when you consider the spec that you get three gig which is pretty good for a budget handset you've dual sim cards that you can use at the same time as well as the micro sd card slot and they put in a decent performance overall i quite like the design too it's actually quite a decent little handset one of the nicer ones that i've used in the budget area